Hey, we're back talking about the Holy Spirit. This next section, part three, I want to explain um, the activity of tongues or using our prayer language because it's not all the same thing. So hopefully I will be able to simplify it for you. Um, one of the first points is tongues is as, as a sign. We talk about signs and wonders, but we don't even realize that Holy Spirit giving us a prayer language is a sign, uh, and it's a sign to unbelievers. So the very first type of tongue is for public demonstration. So to um, there's private and there's public use of your uh, tongues. And uh, sometimes we don't realize in the scripture when um, Paul is talking about a specific tongue, we get it confused and we don't realize he's talking about a public tongue, which I will explain. So number one, tongues is as a sign for the unbeliever. And we see that in 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Thus tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. While prophecy is a sign not for unbelievers, but for believers. This is a type of tongue that operated through the disciples on the day of Pentecost. And we find that in Acts chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Ju Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue or in our own language. Like I said, there was 120 waiting in the upper room. They were praying for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit showed up in a very loud, strong wind, in fire, and then they all began to speak in this beautiful tongue or languages. And then they poured out of the room, um, out into the city, and they were full of joy. They were praising God, as the scripture just said, with their languages. And the people were thinking uh, even that they were drunk. That's another story, though. These Jews heard the believers speaking in each of their own native tongues. So this demonstration was a sign that God was at work uh, among those who believed the gospel of Jesus because there was no way the untrained Galileans could perfectly declare the wonders of God in so many languages. Many came to know Jesus because of this expression of the Spirit's power. We as believers, true believers, should not be afraid of the supernatural we should not be afraid of the Holy Spirit but we should want to be full of the Holy Spirit uh, more than ever so that was number one as a sign number two um, tongues is also um, for interpretation first Corinthians 12 10 to this is speaking of different uh, gifts that the Holy Spirit gives uh, his people uh, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, different kinds of tongues, and to another, the interpretation of tongues. So the second type of tongue is also for public ministry. Obviously, um, when God uh, ministered the Holy Spirit to the 120, they came out of the upper room and they were public with their languages as they flowed over. And this one is also public. These are not tongues that are um, uh, to be, the second type of tongue is also for public ministry. And these tongues are not languages of this earth. It's not the same as what we just saw in Acts 2. It's a heavenly language. Um, so, Heavenly tongues cannot be translated. They transcend our human understanding, but they can be interpreted by the Holy Spirit. 
So any expression of tongues that falls under tongues for interpretation should always be interpreted. Without this interpretation, the church cannot be edified. And this tongue is exclusively given for the church's edification. You will find that in 1 Corinthians 14. God gives uh, his, his gifts to the church so that the church would be edified and built up. This is also the type of tongue Paul was referring to when he said, Do all speak in tongues. 1 Corinthians 12, 28-30 God had placed in the church first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, um, also of helping guidance and of different kinds of tongues. So here he's referring to the tongues as a gift. Are all apostles, are all the prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have the gift, gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, uh, do all interpret. So this tongue that Paul is speaking of is ordained for the ministry in the church, but it is a public tongue that he's speaking of. So when he's saying, are all prophets? Well, no, not everybody's a prophet. Not everybody's an apostle. Uh, not everybody does working of miracles. Um, so he's giving these examples saying the Holy Spirit has distributed gifts um, unto men and we all have different gifts. These are all public gifts that he's talking about. Gifts that we would use in the church or use um, in, in different areas. But specifically here we're talking about the church. So, uh, people have got confused the, uh, this scripture over and over again, and they say, well, it says right here, do all speak in tongues, and do all interpret, and of course not. That's what they say, and so they think that that part of the gift of the Holy Spirit isn't for us, and that's not true, um, because he specifically here is speaking of the public gift of tongues. Likewise, do all speak or interpret tongues as a public ministry. So, let's point, Paul's point is that we should all be faithful in the gift that God has given us. So, if he has given you the gift of miracles, then he's saying be faithful in that. He's not saying nobody now has these gifts, nobody now is an apostle, nobody now is a prophet. He's saying that you need to be faithful with the gift that God has given you. And we all don't have all of these gifts. And he's also saying, when he speaks of tongues and interpretation, these are public. These are for public. So all of us can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. All of us can have a heavenly language, uh, 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 tongue that God has given us. Um, where we can pray with the Holy Spirit, but that's for personal edification. Some have the gift of tongues that they can speak in a church service and they can worship God with their tongue um, as they did in Acts 2, and the church would be built up because if you speak out in a tongue, then you interpret that tongue. So this helps us to understand there are different types of tongues. Otherwise, it would seem Paul completely co contradicted himself when he wrote this. Tongues are a sign. Remember, the unbelievers were there at Pentecost and all the disciples poured out and they're praising God in tongues. And it was a sign to them because they're using their language. Um, the first type of tongue Paul mentions... Um, tongues for a sign is the type that draws unbelievers because it serves as a sign. The second type of tongue, tongues for interpretation, is only meant for the church's edification. These are not uh, signs for the unbelievers. So just for a minute, imagine this with me. If you are in a church service and all at the same time, uh, there's somebody preaching, there's somebody singing, uh, there's somebody giving a prophecy, 
that would make no sense and it would cause confusion. And so Paul is laying down um, some guidelines to help the church so that there would be order and there would be understanding to these gifts in the Holy Spirit. He makes it clear that tongues are not to bring confusion, but rather to bring understanding and revelation. Tongues are for understanding and revelation. In fact, he says this about himself. 1 Corinthians 14, 18 through 19. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. So he's saying, even bragging, that he knows he speaks in tongues more than the rest, more than the other apostles, more than the other church people. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. If a public tongue is used, he's saying it has to be interpreted so there's understanding. And everybody is built up by what was just spoken over them. Another uh, tongue is used, or language, number three, for personal prayer. And we find that in 1 Corinthians 14, 14 through 15. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, uh, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion? I will pray with the spirit. I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. And I will also sing with the understanding. Paul is no longer talking about public ministry. Rather, he's teaching here about tongues to be used for private purposes. This form of tongues is for personal edification and prayer. Paul's saying we can pray with the understanding and, or we can pray with the Spirit, a heavenly language. He also states we can sing with the Spirit and sing with the understanding. Um, I love this story. Uh, there's an amazing man of God. Uh, his name's Mike Bickle. And he actually will tell you and has said many times that he's not a singer, uh, doesn't know how to carry a note. But when he was growing in the things of the Lord, he had first been against uh, the gifts of the Spirit. And he uh, realized that he was missing something. He had a heart and a zeal to grow with God, grow in God. And he knew there was a call in his life, but his prayer time and things were just so dry. And so he cried out to God and uh, God baptized him in the Holy Spirit. And when he began to spend disciplined time in prayer, um, he realized that if he sang his prayer and sang in the spirit, he, the time flew by so fast. Um, and I can tell you because I experienced that m myself is it's such a joy because you feel so connected to God. You can feel him, uh, on you. You can feel him in you. Um, he's singing through you and there's, almost nothing better. It uh, helps you grow in the Lord. It helps you feel close to the Lord. It helps you feel comforted uh, and strong. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. Another example um, of the singing is uh, another minister that I respect, Curry Blake. He is with John G. Lake Ministries. And he spoke of a time when he was uh, seeking God to be able to minister healing and have more people healed than, than what he'd been seeing. Because he believed it, but for some reason it wasn't happening. And he heard a song um, that the scripture, the song was full of scripture and it was full of the truth of God about healing. And he began to let that song play over and over. And he sang uh, with that song. And that truth uh, of the healing um, made his way into his spirit in a new way. Music just transcends everything else. It's God's the original musician, if you didn't know that. He's the one that created it. And so to be able to 
fill your mind and your heart and your ears and your soul and your spirit uh, with his word and with the truth. And then to be able to actually sing uh, in the Holy Spirit with your language is um, amazing. This tongue is not meant, um, let's see, the purpose is to strengthen the one who is singing and praying. Jude 20, but you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Notice Jude states that when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we are building up ourselves. When we speak in tongues for interpretation to the believers, we are building up the church. God desires both, not just one, not one and not the other. He desires both. Do as often as you think of it. I have tried to um, discipline myself when I go out to mow the lawn, when I go out to shovel, um, when I'm out walking uh, in our woods behind our, our house here. A lot of times I'll begin to just uh, sing in tongues and speak in tongues with the Lord and build myself out. It's deep calling unto deep. And when you think about it, it's mind blowing because it's God calling, God revealing God. God is revealing God to your spirit, to your heart, to your mind, to your soul. There's nothing more beautiful. And then the last type of tongue, number four, is for intercession. Romans 8, 26 through 27. In the same way, the spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's uh, people in accordance with the will of God. Paul is talking about not knowing how to pray at times. He's talking about being weak. So we have limited the understanding of what's, we have a limited understanding of what's going on in our world. Um, Yes, there's news everywhere, but is that news correct? And do we have all of it? No. So how do we pray? In this way, when we pray in the Spirit, we are praying the perfect will of God. And God says, uh, when we declare and decree and pray His Word, then He comes along and He attaches Himself to His Word and then He goes forth. And he does his word. Many times God will put somebody on your heart and you have no idea what's going on in their life at that moment. I have heard story after story. Uh, it's happened to me before where um, the Lord puts somebody on my heart and I'll just stop and I'll begin to pray over them. I'll begin to sing uh, and I don't even know what's going on. And then I get a report a week later, a month later, um, that they were in danger, that they had a car accident, um, but God saved them. And um, yeah, we just, the Lord wants to be able to use us as vessels uh, to be able to pray for others um, and see his desire come to pass. So he wants us protected. So this is God's desire for you. 1 Corinthians 14, 39-40. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy. Now, prophesy, prophecy, scripture says all may prophesy. And prophecy is not something spooky, but it's knowing God's heart and sharing God's heart with the church, with an individual. Um, it's beautiful. Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, and I hope to do a series on that as well. Um, but he desires earnestly for us to prophesy. And he goes on to say, Paul goes on to say, do not forbid to speak with tongues. Do not forbid to speak with tongues or other languages. Don't cut that out of your church. Don't, don't tell people that that's wrong or that's old or that was for another day. Paul's saying that right there. Um, he says, let all things be done decently and in order. So um, it's very important that um, we as a church don't mishandle the amazing gift of tongues. So he's urging us, use the right type of tongue in the right setting 
do not stop anyone from speaking in tongues because because the other because maybe others don't believe in it or others have used it incorrectly. Paul also said, I wish you all spoke with tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 5. This is God speaking. It's his heart. He's saying through Paul, I wish you all spoke with tongues. Speaking in tongues is powerful and vital and a daily part of our intimate relationship with Father God. So I hope that brings some understanding to you on the four kinds of tongues. Um, and it was wonderful being with you. Uh, I'm going to do one more part to this that will be dealing with what activities does the Holy Spirit actually do. I've uncovered 33, and there may be even more that I haven't uncovered. So thank you, and God bless you.